So, um, yeah, we keep seeing, you know, we had Enchantress and Cincy. I know someone with Enchantress back in Indy uh, at the Legacy Open aside the Invitational who was doing really well with it. Um, you know, the deck's powerful and a lot of the decks now are trying to do fair things and Enchantress doesn't really play that game. Right. Um, for some of Enchantress's uh, singletons that it has in here, or its other semi-tutor cards, um, Solitary Confinement's pretty common, but having access to Sigil of the Empty Throne, the yep. Angel Maker, Karmic Justice, yep. uh, and Wor uh, War Worlds, of War. Worlds of War. Is that the uh, is words, that Armageddon? That's Words of War. It's supposed to be Words of War, not Worlds yeah. of War. Words of War, skipping your draw phase to shock something. Yep. And uh, moat. 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 Yep. Um, some of the other things. We went through the whole list of them that we saw. Like, uh, spirit. There was a card, um, Spiritual Focus, someone had last time. You know what that one does? I forget. Actually, one. is that discard a card and be able to stop red or black damage? No. Okay. It was one in a white enchantment. Whenever an opponent's color ability opponent controls makes you discard a card, draw a card, gain two. Right. <laughs> or they had like Ages of Honor. You know what Ages of Honor? Uh, one tap, prevent damage from a sorcery or instant? No, no. Ages, the the enchantment from Odyssey, white. This, see, this is the game. I just kept like, naming yeah, yeah, these yeah. cards and Gavin and I were just like, Go ahead. what does this do? It's like white, um, you pay one the next time it instant or sorcery, it does damage to you this turn. It does damage to his controller instead. Instead, okay, or so it it's a redirect, not a prevention. Player, yeah. Okay, so I was pretty close. Yeah, and like all these really weird cyborg cards you can just have for enchantress because, you know, all these really weird enchantments have just been played over the years. Um, on the other hand, Jerry's deck, Team America. America. Straight up Team America, too. I mean, we're talking about Tomb Stalkers. We're talking about, like, I mean, it looks like Dismember has replaced Snuff Out, or does he still have Snuff Out? Yeah, Dismember will pretty much clean replace Snuff Out here. Though that's kind of weird to me that uh, Dismember would do that. I guess uh, Dark Confidant's really important to kill. It doesn't seem like a straight-up replacement to me in terms of its utility. Well, it I mean, kills, like, killing Dark Confidant is very well, important. I mean, that's a different kind of utility, right? Like, like Snuff Out was there so that you could kill... Um, well, I guess you can kill Tarmogoyf with this member. Yeah, most of the um, time you can. So, let's see. He's got Tarmogoyf, a couple Vendillions, a couple Tomb Stalkers, a couple Jaces is killed. Um, he's got Stifle, Daze, Misstep, Brainstorm, Force, Him, Dismember, Edict. A ponder, one ponder again, here we go. And one Furnish the Steed. Um, he has, looks like 22 lands, pretty typical for this deck. Um, though, I am I think Enchantress is favored here. Um, from what I've talked to all He's, the people I know who Enchantress, you know, they say, the only card I really care about all these bug decks is Pernicious Steed. Jerry only has one. He's got two Diabolic <clears throat> Edicts to help his interaction, but that's still not very much. Yeah. Jace is a bit of a problem, but you have Rune Halo, you have Oblivion Ring. You can handle a Jace. So, let's see here. Um, we have Jerry on the right, and Donnie on the left. <clears throat> Shuffling up. Uh, we'll see who uh, wins the die roll, or won the die roll, possibly, in a second. Looking up various enchantments. Well, there was. A, I, I'm struggling to remember an enchantment that uh, I think makes Ages of Honor obsolete. But uh, <laughs> I know it's so uh, weird. White two. Whenever a sorcery or instant that would do damage to you, instead it deals damage to its opponent or to a to a to its caster. I don't know if that's a card. It is. I've cast it. I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately. It was a, a card that I added to the Ben Dempsey's temporary solution list after that card broke, maybe about five, or that deck broke about six years ago. In what format? Uh, extended. Huh, interesting. So Jerry is on the play. So, let's see. Jerry leads, looks like Lango. Donnie has Forest, Wild Growth, which 
Jerry's going to respond to with Brainstorm. Brain. And actually, the card, Harsh Judgment is the name of the card, and it costs four. My bad. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I remember that card. So this is actually really good because it stops Price of Progress from hurting you. Yeah. So does uh, Aegis does as well, just cost one, and then you invest the rest of the four over several turns. For yeah. Uh, Donnie casts... Uh, or not, sorry, just, uh, Jerry brainstormed without a fetch land, it looks like. Or choosing not to fetch, actually. So there's an Argothian Enchantress. Enchantress off of uh, a Wild Growth Forest. Forest of Will. Pitching Brainstorm. Very important card to stop. Yep. The Enchantress deck is not going unless it has an Enchantress in play. Who would have thought? Donnie uh, has his life had stolen for a second. Him to Turok, very yep. powerful card here. Random discard <clears throat> is so much more potent than discard yes. of your own choosing. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very good, especially because he's short on mana this game. a moat and an enlightened tutor neither mm -hmm. which were castable but that tutor might have come in handy in a couple turns moat wasn't too <clears throat> uh too potent in this matchup it only stops tarmogoyf right with a click and tombstalker still being very relevant for jerry you're looking to get more of a presence the full lock going on yeah looks like a second enchant was about to hit the board oh boy so Jerry uh, is now pressed for time and pressed for... Oh, another him. Him to Turok, very good here still. He's Enchantress no can pull him out of it, but I yeah. mean, he's got to have an enchantment to get going. Yep. Uh, Tarmogoyf bumped by that enchantment in the graveyard too. So... Elephant Grass, great card. Yep. Enlightened Tutor. Tutor. So Elephant Grass may have been what Donnie was looking for to dig him out of this, so... No, cheap enchantment, just cycles. Eat some of Jerry's mana if he wants to attack. I think wild growth, oh, another enchantress. I think a wild growth would be the beginning of where he would might want to yeah, start. Maybe a utopia sprawl if he has that. Yep. There utopia is a utopia sprawl. sprawl. More so. Yeah. I that Tom Grove is slowly picking away. It looks like he drew, yeah, there's an elephant grass. Boom. Two cards, green floating. And suddenly the clock starts to, oh. Yep, there's a Utopia Sprawl and a Plains. Yep. There's the Plains. Mana floating. Sprawl it. Draw two. Uh, can you sprawl a Plains? I don't oh, that, know. If that's you that's can. a forest. Is that a forest? You can't sprawl. Yeah, they're just moving it to the forest. You tried to sprawl pl go. Plains. Yeah. Can't sprawl Plains. Yes. There we go. Uh. Interesting to know. You still get to draw the cards, you just don't get the access yeah. to that mana right away. Yeah. Ben Friedman is currently at table two of this event. Uh, coming off of his top eight, uh, well, this morning. Uh, playing against Eli Cassis, also undefeated at this point with Reanimator. So Jerry untaps, has a lethal goif on the board, so one of these enchantresses is going to have to step in the way. Plink. He's got to spend two to the attack, and there's the two. Yep. I think at this point, you need to just get rid of the elephant grass. It's not going to do anything for you unless you get an, another yeah. pair of elephant grasses to help out. He does have a ruined halo, which is going to come down and name Tarmogoyf, I think. Chris Van Meter, also at the top tables. Oh, wow. Paying for the grass. I don't... I don't know. Oh, I don't that. like that. Yeah. I can't see his full hand though, so we'll see. I see a Sterling Grove, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like paying for that elephant. Nope, yeah, not don't paying. pay. Don't pay. Don't pay. Don't pay, Donnie. There you there go. There we go. Oh, oh, no. Oh. Let it die. Yeah, I know you lose a card, but that mana is more important right now. Elephant grass isn't really even doing the job of a card right now. There's a solitary, solitary. confinement. It's a good card right now. So. Uh, Let's see. So Savannah comes down. I think we're going to see lead off on the rune halo. If that sticks, name Tarmogoyf. The draw happens before the yep. halo comes into play. Jerry can still counter that before. Uh, stifling, stifling the, the draw. draw. Okay. But the rune halo comes rune into play. Rune halo sticks. Going to name Tarmogoyf. And uh, 
Sterling Grove's going to hit play. Draw a card. Sterling Grove is an enlightened tutor on a stick. Yep. I think uh, Donnie's debating whether to use the floating mana to tutor up. Probably a presence at this point. Maybe... Maybe can't tutor up replenish, unfortunately, for him. <laughs> yeah, probably a presence is what I tutor up. Yep, there. Oh. A bit of concern over whether you should uh, sacrifice this, uh, the Grove because it protects the Groove Halo, but I think you just get the presence. I mean, in the deck that he's playing against, about the only card that he could expect to see that might kill that Rune Halo is a Bizarro Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, or Pernicious Deed. Well, the Deed isn't yeah, going to be protected gonna kill by either, the Rune right. Halo. The Deed yeah, also can't do this, right? Yeah. yeah, like, if that happens, it happens, whatever. I mean, it's Jerry, whatever. If he, if he, if he decides this week's the week for a Maelstrom Pulse, he's got your number. Yeah. But uh, I don't think this week was that week. I don't think that week's and, for a and little I, while. I, I don't think that Jerry is, uh, is wild enough to go with Maelstrom Pulse right now. He's willing to take risks and make changes, but Maelstrom Pulse seems a little bit off of the beaten path right and now. And not when he's just picked this deck up for one week here. Yeah. Halo, yep. yep, Halo naming Goyf as we uh, expected. Presence is on top. Yep. Looks like a Vanillion click in Jerry's hand. So. Uh, oh, that's fun. After you've drawn, I would like to see your hand. Oh, it looks like Words of War is going to be. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. It's pretty good. He's oh, he's one off. So, I was thinking he could words play another camp and just gun down the click, but one mana off here. I think you have to take... I don't know if you take the presence of the words, actually. I don't want that presence in play if I were if I were Jerry. Is that the sol solitary confinement? Not to the yard, but to uh, the bottom. Draws not exactly what he was looking for. Windswept Heath. Enchantress's presence. Summons a card draw. Uh, what is that? It's a blue card of some kind, it looked like. Let's take a look. It couldn't have been blue. I don't think he doesn't have the... Fetches going in a four. Yep, Vanilla Click is still not lethal here, so. Gets the Taiga. Probably just gonna put this Words of War into play yep. and gun down that click is his answer. Jerry under pressure to draw his one pernicious deed before uh well wor words of war could kill easily, Sigil the Empty Throne could kill easily, but also just before maybe Karmic Justice hits play and when Deed hits, everything dies. Here's so, the words of war. Yep. Draw, draw. Looks like a planes, maybe? What was that? We'll see when he picks up his hand. Jerry knocks Donnie to one. Yep. And, uh... Moonstalker. That's actually a powerful card right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Solitary Confinement got sent to the bottom, so... We'll have to see. Can Donnie draw all of the cards he needs and spend all of the mana he needs? So let's see. What has he got in hand? It will take him four activations to kill uh, those both of those creatures. Four activations is four mana. So he's going to need to get two one-drop, um, or basically two enchantments within he's three got mana. Enchantress in hand. I can't see what the rest of his hand is. He's going to draw for the turn. Let's see. Let's lead on. Wild growth. Oh, there's uh, some manas. He's going to probably float the mana so that he can uh, better choose his colors in a minute. Yeah. He needs this wild growth and a two mana enchantment to kill everything. Oh, wow. Maybe probably trying to dig a card deeper to find a confinement, but... I think paying two to draw a card is worse than drawing uh, what you need off the growth here. One. Elephant Grass. Oh, Elephant Grass stops all the... Oh. 
Elephant Grass stops all of the black yeah, creatures. Yeah, that was. You should have. Uh... No, no, he's fine. He casts the Elephant Grass. Tombstalker can't attack, and he oh, shoots yeah, the Vendillion Plague. Off the elephant, elephant Grass, grass stops go. all black creatures. I forgot he gets the searches off of the. Uh, I forgot he gets the draws off the Elephant Grass. Is what it is. Uh, there are um, four Elephant Grass in this deck. Just yeah. the right number. Yep, it's well. Very importantly, one green starts turning into like this thought cast effect, basically. Yeah. Maybe even a recall at some point. Recall plus a little bit. Well, the ability of the card, if we're not even having an Enchantress in play, is just still really, really um, relevant in the early game when you're trying to establish yeah. yourself. Just, you know, even if they get to pay, it's, you know, maybe one guy attacks you instead of the Goyf and the Coddle, just the Goyf. You know, yeah. A couple I mean, life every turn adds up. Well, like, for example, um, versus Goblins, simply having an Elephant Grass in play usually means you win the game. Yeah. I'd believe that. Nice 2-2. Two -two. Uh, wild, wild growth. growth. Yep, maximizes mana here. Um, Three draws. Yeah. At this point, Donnie has basically gone off, and the only thing Jerry can hope to draw is Pernicious Deed here. How many cards does Jerry have? Because Donnie One. does... Donnie does, needs to make sure to remember to play her round days. days. That is true. I guess he's maybe trying to draw a second elephant grass oh, so he can play around misstep. If as he well. doesn't have any mana floating, a daze could actually kill him here. No, he has a uh, wild growth on the line. If he doesn't have, it costs one mana for the elephant grass and oh, then one, one mana to shoot. That's true. So if he does not have, uh, if he has the daze, if he doesn't have a mana floating, Jerry just won. Yeah. If it's a daze. If it's a daze. I do think he does have a mana floating because he just tapped that uh, wild growth land. Donnie looking at his hand, trying to figure out if there's any way he can. Probably just trying to figure out if you can beat a mental misstep, which I don't think you can. Not at this point. If it's there, it's there. Yeah, if he's got it, he's got it. I mean, he can, like... Oh, he hasn't even laid a land yet. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> that makes things a little bit more cozy. Yeah. Uh, if he has one... No, he can't lead on City Solitude. Never mind. He needs two floating to do that. I'd probably just drop the elephant grass. I just shoot, want the elephant degree. grass right away. Just make sure it's out there. Well, he's trying to figure out if there's a line you can do to just get around a misstep, but I think his best line is play the grass, shoot, try and draw to another grass if that fails. Don't play the Sterling Grow first, whatever you do. I like the, Jerry just is like, I've got a land in my hand, buddy. <laughs> just, just, just end it. Oh. Yeah, Jerry doesn't really want to sit through the misery of uh, dealing with Enchantress doing all this stuff. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Don't play that Sterling Grove. Does he have a mana floating? He doesn't have a mana floating. He could just die. I don't know why Donnie's so hesitant just to slam this elephant grass onto the table. Maybe he doesn't actually realize that elephant grass stops black creatures cold. A lot of people don't realize that it has more text than propaganda. Yeah. One of the reasons that this was such a good card during the Flash Hulk moments is that most of those decks, they often ended up attacking you with a black creature, and you'd be like, well, really? they, well there's the Carrion Feeder, would be like, in, not most, some of them, let me change that, yeah. some of them would attack you with a big, big, big Carrion Feeder, and you'd be like, I don't care, you can't attack me. I always thought it got big from uh, Infinite Karma Gods attacking. Uh, that's one way. There's also the, the secondary path. Or the other path, and the other thing is, infinite karmic guides can't attack with elephant grass out anyway. Oh because yeah, because you've got true. the propaganda. Effect. Yeah, that's true. So you get yeah, both yeah. sides no, of it. No, you're right. You get the the infinite karmic guides, and you get the big singleton carrion feeder yeah. can't come in. Uh, is that Vendillion click gonna get shot down? Um, I'm not sure what's. I mean, Donnie could just throw this away for himself. Yeah, it's it's doable. <laughs> you can always manage to punch the judge, right? <laughs> yeah. Did he cast Sterling Grove. Oh my god! I think he just killed himself. Yep. I think. I think he just lost this game because of that. <sighs> I'm uh, one of the AJ things, soccer walking by. <laughs> one of the things I love about Star City Games, the live series here, you watch Magic 
and it just, for me at least, makes me want to play Magic all the more. <laughs> I just was like, oh, I gotta get out there and battle. <laughs> yep, Donnie looks like he's uh, resigned himself to his fate. Jerry's sitting there, casually stepping out some Mountain Dew, waiting to die or win. This, you know, not his. Nothing is in his hands at this point. Donnie already lost it for himself. I thought he had a mana floating. If he has a mana floating, he's fine. He, I do not believe he has a mana floating. <laughs> oh. Uh, yep. The, yeah, the Sterling Grove? Sterling Grove. We've already, yep. yeah, we've talked about the Sterling Grove. Yeah, yeah that's... And Donnie, he's, Donnie, Donnie loses from the game one. it up. He had the win, didn't realize he had the win because he didn't know how his cards worked. Yep, did not choose to, uh... Yeah, the Elephant Grass uh, would have done it. So some people are like, it's not that much of a decision. Well, it's a decision enough that he turned his win into a loss. Uh, one of my friends from Ann Arbor who uh, plays Enchantress pretty religiously, I, I think I've mentioned his all-foreign deck uh, on this cast before, says, uh, go yell at him for me. <laughs> one of the things about a deck like Enchantress, like, hmm? you need to really know what your cards do. I mean, yeah, you've got all these tutors. <laughs> they do something. They, yeah. they get you to really great answers. Like, you can't go and get, like, let's say, a uh, City of Solitude and not realize that it's an Enchant World, you know? And it that, is? Yeah. What's an Enchant World? In, I don't know you what You don't that know what an Enchant I mean, World I, is? Yeah, okay. marginally, <laughs> but... Enchant Worlds, there can only be one Enchant World in play at a time. There's no way that's when an Enchant World. When you put in another Enchant World, it gets rid of any other Enchant World in play. That's an enchant world, really? I could be wrong. No, it's I'm not. wrong. Oh, <laughs> oh, slap me upside the face. See, I don't play enchanters. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was fun slow rolling that terrible error there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Activated abilities. Yeah, yeah. spells and it's it's uh, it stops lands too. Um, so unlike Rand of All sure, just everything cannot tap your lands for mana. Okay, what was so, I thinking of that was the Enchant World that's similar to City of Solitude? I don't even know what Enchant yeah, World is. I know there's like Forbidden oh, uh, Ways or Hall, something. Oh, uh, I forget. I forget. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. So, sideboarding. Jerry's going to bring in the second deed, two Thought Seizes, and a Jace probably. Just get these dismembers out of here. Edict is good. Kills an Enchantress. Um, I can see Stifle not being that great here. So, yeah, probably going out Stifle... And uh, two stifles, two dismembers, board in, two thoughts he is adjacent a deed. Whereas Donnie, on the other hand, does not have spiritual focus that we were talking about earlier. Did you mention Parish as a possible card? Um, I did not. I uh, like Parish against Enchantress. He does have two edicts that perform the same purpose. But you can get all of the Enchantresses at once with a Parish. That might be a reasonable upgrade. I think that. Like, specifically on the draw, I'd rather have Edict so I can stop the Enchantress right there than wait a turn and let them get some gas. Um, so, Donnie has Ground Seal, not going to do much. Uh, so that's the enchantment. Uh, cards and graveyards can't be targeted. Cantrips, don't want that. Maybe a Pithy Needle for Jace. I can see that. Carpet of Flowers coming in. Carpet of Flowers is so amazing. Coming in. A totally amazing Blood Moon card. Coming in. All of those three are coming in right here. Uh, don't want Aura of Silence, uh, that's the seal of disenchant that costs white more and makes artifacts enchantments cost uh, two more. Uh, Aura of Silence is just awesome, but um, not it yet. slows down Pernicious Deed. Pernicious Deed is a possible answer, so what that means is... Well, uh, you can board a Pitney Wheel for that instead. You might want, I guess Aura of Silence is like... Is there anything else that it does besides uh, no. Pernicious Deed? No. See, I don't necessarily mind that because it means that... Jerry either has to wait a turn for the Pernicious Deed to work, well, or Jerry has to get up to 10 mana for a Pernicious Deed to... Not 10 mana, pardon me, uh, 7 mana for a Pernicious Deed to be effective. Well, you can just play it for 5 and then wait a turn. Blow yeah, yeah waiting roll. a turn can be huge. I guess Oblivion Ring Waiting exists, a turn yeah. is a really huge he also has, Donnie also has Karmic Justice in his deck, so he might have enough answers as is. Karmic Justice, uh, whenever... So we talked about this, I think, earlier this match, but in case you're just joining... 
two and a white enchantment. Whatever a permanent you can, a non-creature permanent you control is destroyed by a spell or ability an opponent controls. Destroy target permanent that player controls. So that'd be good. Maybe Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, Adrian, you might be thinking of Arborea for the Enchant World. I'm trying to remember what the there's a green Enchant World that I. I'm pro oh, Concordant Crossroads is no, the Enchant haste. World. That's it. Yeah, and it's like and it's an Enchant World. Yeah, there's so many Enchant yeah. Worlds. Yeah. My and by bad. so many, so few, and no one remembers what any of them do. Very, yeah, like, that's, they, they stop printing them in like Mirage or something. That's because it's a really bad mechanic. Yes. So Leyline of Sanctity, maybe bring those in. Stops him. Stops thoughts. As if Leyline of Sanctity is actually really powerful, just because. Stops Jace. Jace, Jace, right? Like I can see Leylines coming in. Sundial of the Infinite. We're not playing against Hive Mind here. It's fair. Yeah. We finally we're seeing Sundial of the Infinite. That is your hate card. Was uh, Gavin one of the people that first jumped on that card and was like excited and this is a great awesome card? I think it might have been. I think it's just a really cool card. And um, M Metamorph's not going to come in, I don't think. You know what I Ooh, like in the you can Blood Metamorph. Moon. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, Blood Moon, Carpet of Flowers, and Choke. All going to awesome. wreck Jared. But Metamorph? You can Metamorph your own Enchantress. Never thought of that. Right. That's kind of cute. I like that. Let's see what he boards out. Might want to board out... I have no idea. I don't play nearly enough enchantress to know this. Moat is coming out. Moat does not do nearly enough work. Maybe yeah, put out the Words of War. I don't know if Sigil of the Empty Throne is the way you want to go. I mean... Why? Uh, like, Blocks all the flyers? Like, if the opponent gets Deed, they get the Deeds are still going to clear you out. I, I think Deed's just going to kill you. Regardless. So, Donnie has a turn two Skirling Grove on the play. Jerry didn't have a turn one play. Him to Turok. That was an intense game one to watch. That was awesome. <laughs> you know, like... Bin's uh, Solitary. And a City of Solitude. Right. Looks like he has Rune Halo, a land, and a Sigil in hand. Probably debating whether to upkeep that uh, Sterling Grove, but I think he just waits. I think he just wants to wait until he can just get the Enchantress without letting it get thought seized for him. Jerry draws a Wasteland, but that's not going to hit anything right now against this 10 basic combo deck. Right? Yeah. I like this. Three Savannah. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Karmic Justice in Donnie's hand. Is it Karmic? Or is it Sigil? I thought I saw... It's Rune Halo and Sigil. Oh, okay. Yeah. My bad. Thank you. Same kind of arches in the center for both of the Sigil and the Karmic Justice. Donnie's probably going to tutor up a presence. Unless... It should be a presence. I don't think there's anything else he wants here. Yep. And uh, get this party started. Looks like Jerry's got a Daze, a Tomb Stalker. He, I, I think he boarded it in Parish, like you said. Yeah, I mean, honestly... I know you can edict away one enchantment, uh, enchantress, but the ability to get away with killing multiples is big. I might have been more interested in keeping them off the tempo early, but it's also possible that they start playing around days and then all of a sudden uh, Parish gets live well, really I mean, fast. Drawing a lot of cards with enchantress, um, a lot of the cards are kind of garbage. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yes. Like, uh, so There's a force on that in yeah. presence, pitching a daze. Probably going to wasteland that taiga. Uh, Jerry has a Tomb Stalker in hand, three cards in bin right now to power that, so he's short two. Hands another force, something I can't tell what it is, and the Tomb Stalker. Another Sterling Grove for Donnie. Jerry draws a Trop. I think that might be the Parish that we're seeing, that, or maybe another Tomb Stalker. Can't really see. One card in the yard, or one land short of Tomb Stalkering, if that is yep. a Tomb Stalker. Yep. Donnie cracks another Grove, probably getting another Presence. Yep, there we go. And let's try this one again. Jerry still one man off of hard casting this Force that he has with no blue card. Enchantress is such an interesting... You know, people call it combo, but like, it doesn't feel like combo. Like, your opponent has so many turns to interact with you, so many weird onboard things happening. It's just so interesting to watch people you know, once it locks you, it locks you. But it's so interesting to watch people play against it on its way out. Him to Torok. Bin your hand. Stripping out the hand. Donnie now down to nothing. Donnie draws. And land. Land Sarah go. Sarah Sanctum. Makes one mana right now. 
chooses to, uh, yep, that's a Tempest, or whatever. Oh, look at that. Fish. Tempest? Yeah. Parish was the beginning. Oh, there's the Tombstalker emptying out the the yard. There just be some really first enchantment. I think. I think we're gonna see a wild yeah. growth or a utopia sprawl. Wild growth. Wild growth on a uh, forest. forest. Parish is a very spiteful card. They don't make. That was the beginning of hate. Like real, real. Parish and chill. I mean, like going like there was, there was gloom back in the day, but gloom was pretty hateful. Is that a second enchantress? Boom. With, with uh, Draw one, one floating. Or, wait, why did he tap that much He for tapped a uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five mana. He's got two mana floating of some configuration. He's got two white floating. Oops. Yep. Or white green floating? Some combination of two mana. Just Go. generically tap three if lands. If he has a three casting cost spell in his hand, that would be a little embarrassing. It happens. He's probably still in a reasonable position regardless. Oh, he's definitely in a reasonable position. All it takes is a single enchantment to explode right now. Yep. I see a land, and I don't know what that other card is. Maybe a replenish. That would be the game. Oh, Leyline. Leyline. Ouch. Draw, draw. There's an Argothian enchant Enchantress. Two Enchantress. Oh, well, this is going to come up, isn't it? Yep. That exact scenario Correct. you were talking about. There's a Parish. There's yeah. two Enchantresses. And the thing is, is Jerry's going to cast Parish, and he's going to kill those enchantresses and be happy about it, but he's still not going to be in great shape. No. Uh, he's in a scenario where he is uh, racing before the enchantments start flying out of the deck here. Now, usually combo-based decks, what they do is they're, they're, they come together and they make their value of cards explode into infinity. But what enchantress and other decks like this do is they make your value of your cards go right into the ground. Yes. So that you're like, I've got nothing that does anything anymore. <laughs> you could have a hundred cards in your hand and they all are worth zero. The worst was or um the worst was watching the Enchantress Mirror at uh That sounds like the best. No. <laughs> no one can win game one. Tombstalker comes in knocking Donnie down to nine. Two swings for the kill. Perish. The Argothian Enchantresses perish from this earth. Interesting factoid, I'm just looking this up. Boyle was in Tempest, Flashfires was in Alpha. Yep. Flashfires was never as good as Boyle, though. Blue's more good. Yeah, yeah. Who I think we got things? a one, a, a next turn kill, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, enchantment, sorcery, land, creature. That is dead. Donnie has to uh, survive this turn somehow. He doesn't have to win, but he has to survive. And it's all based essentially on what's in this card right there. I don't think there's anything in his deck that can do it. It was a Blood Moon that he could oh. not cast because of that Tiger being wasted. That knocks him to dead, I think. Mm-hmm. That is lethal. There we go. And Jerry oh. takes the match. Um. Oh, I think he was just alerted to the fact that the, the elven, elven grass. Oh. Stung. Yeah, that looks like what Jerry's explaining. And that looks like regret and disappointment. Yes. So the play that happened in the first game, Donnie was going off with enchantments, and we're gonna. Donnie was going off with enchantments, and what happens? He does not cast the elephant grass in his hand because he doesn't think it can stop both Tombstalker and the Vendillion Click. He has a Words of War in play, several yep. enchantresses. What mean? What this means, though, if he casts the elephant grass, black creatures cannot attack. At all. So Tombstalker can't come in, and then he can spend one little mana to shoot the Vendillion Click. I think he was trying to set up to see if he could get uh, the full four Words of War triggers out of it, and he just couldn't. Yeah. So. Anyways, we're back here in the booth. Uh, I'm Ari Lax with Adrian Hello. Sullivan. Uh, we're here at uh, Star City Legacy Open in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Things are approaching the top eight here. Only a uh, few rounds left. Yep, that was the end of, or not the end, but that was uh, round six here. Uh, we just watched Jerry Thompson with Team America defeat Enchantress. So, are we going to see a back-to-back -back Jerry top eight? I don't know. Maybe back-to-back -back That would be awesome. I mean... There's, there have definitely been those weekends where a player will come out and be like, I'm going to do both of them. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there both times. I think Nick Spagnolo and Dan Jordan, Jerry have all had their weekends like that. Maybe Edgar Flores had a weekend that was pretty close. I, I also feel as though um, 
one of the other people that might have done it, and I, I could have this wrong. Didn't Patrick Sullivan in the one weekend that he won, didn't he top eight in the other side? Uh, he may have, actually. I, I think that that's... Or at least I, I feel like there was some weekend where he double top eighted, but I could be wrong about that. I think you might be thinking he did a legacy top eight at home. I think he was away from from L. A. for the top right, for the right. win. Might have been oh, Kansas actually, City. he totally won that weekend because he got to play basketball. Oh, and that's that makes you close a enough. 